Really, you guys? You think this is what God's about, divesting in Israel? Have you read your Bible if you're a Christian? If you go to church, I mean, haven't you understood that Romans chapter 11 speaks of God rescuing Israel, coming back to rescue them and saving all of Israel, as the scriptures say? But no, a lot of churches want to go into this and they want to be on the Palestinian side. Because why? Because it's safe. You'll be, you'll be okay if persecution really comes. And that's not a good place, especially you pastors. You don't want to be like that. Don't be a weakling, okay? So this BDS means boycott, divest, and sanction. And many churches are falling for this garbage. So what does divest mean? Here, I looked it up. It means deprive, bereave, or bankrupt. Is that what you want to do for God's chosen people, Israel? No, that's what the Nazis did. You want to be in that category? You want to stand before the throne of God knowing you did that? I don't. I wouldn't. (laughs) So what's the antimon? What's the opposite of divest? It means clothe, cover, give, invest. Jesus spoke a lot about that right there, didn't he? You clothed me. Whoa, that should be a warning, my friend. So Jesus said it right here. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was naked and you clothed me. The king said this. What king, you might be saying? The king of Israel, the king of the Jews. The Bible recorded that numerous times in the gospel, in the New Testament. Whoa. (laughs) So here in Israel, they're very blessed they have pomegranate trees. They have all kinds of fruit trees, olives. They have, they're growing so much food, and their economy is flourishing. God is blessing them, you guys. Now, this pomegranate is very interesting. I want to show you this because I'm going to go back to this, uh, this one here. So this is the Star of David that the Jewish people had to wear when they were in Europe during those evil Nazi times. They had to identify themselves as Jews, much like what's, what's going on today. There's a new Nazi movement growing today on the left this time, and it's evil. But where did they get that Star of David? Well, there's a lot, there's a legend in history, in Jewish history, that it came from this pomegranate fruit, which is very interesting. So the blossom of the pomegranate is shaped just like that Star of David. Remember the Jewish people wore that yellow or the gold Star of David representing what? This pomegranate fruit. Well, they say that this is also where Solomon got his crown. But here you can see how you can you can see this uh, the Star of David in that. Some Christians say it's a pagan thing. I'm not going for that. But here, this is where they believe some legends and history says that this is where Solomon got the I, the picture or the the detail, the design for his crown. Isn't that interesting? I thought it was. He also put pomegranates in the temple. In Solomon's temple, there was pomegranates. Another interesting thing there, right? The high priest garments, God had pomegranates made of this yarn put on the hem of the high priest's garments of the ephod, right? Isn't that interesting? So I just want to point that out. We looked at the Star of David, how it was the symbol for the Jewish people, but God had a lot of symbolism in that father as well. It wasn't just the people who got that. So God blesses those who bless Israel. That's in the Bible, you guys. Here I want to focus in on what Jesus said. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. This is about his return, you guys, at the end, right? And before him will be gathered all the nations. So this is a judgment of the nations right? The nations as we see them today, right? And he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. So Jesus is speaking here on the Mount of Olives to his disciples, talking about the end. They asked him about the end of the age, right? And the temple was across the Kidron Valley over there as they were looking at it. And Jesus was talking to them. And remember this. Jesus said this in, in John chapter 10. He said, I am the good shepherd. He said, and I know my own and my own know me. Now, many of you who understand how shepherding works with sheep, the sheep actually literally know their shepherd's voice. And they can tell it from far away and they run toward him. They can also tell a stranger's voice and they run away from him. Isn't that interesting? 
that the sheep, and Jesus is using this illustration and how the sheep understand the voice of their shepherd. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have I have other sheep, Jesus said. He was speaking to the Jewish people right here, and he said this. He said, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. In other words, they're not of Israel, and I must bring them in. What is this word? Also, not in replace of, not replacement theology that the church has now become or seceded and become Israel, and all the promises to Israel now belong to the church. No, 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 that's false doctrine. Because here Jesus says, I have other sheep that are not of this fold, speaking to the Jewish people, I must bring them also, not instead, he said also. And they will listen to my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. That doesn't mean the church replaced Israel. That means that we are grafted into his family. Just like Joseph had a Gentile bride, just like Moses had a Gentile bride, but they became a part of Israel. That's how it works, guys. Read your Bible. Read Romans chapter 11. You'll understand. So Jesus said this, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. And I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king Who's this king? The king of the Jews. Remember, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. The sign was above his head. And the king will answer them, the king? Let's look at that a little bit more. The king, here it is, guys. That's the sign. Jesus was on that cross paying for all the sin, becoming the sacrificial lamb of God. And there was a sign above his head that said this in Hebrew and then in in Aramaic and in Greek. And what did it say? It said, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. That's who. That sign was not ripped in half when that great earthquake happened when he died on the cross and the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom, giving us free access to the holy place, the holiest of holy place with God to have communion with him, right? But that sign wasn't ripped in half that said, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Isn't that interesting? Let's go further. Let's look at this more, guys. This is so fun. And Jesus continued, and the king will answer them. Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of these, of the least, excuse me, of my, of these, my brothers or my brethren. Who's that? Israel. Israel. It's either you're grafted in as a Gentile, it could be you as the church, or it could be Israel. You did it to me. Not the whole world. He's saying, the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. That's powerful, you guys. So should we boycott, divest, and sanction against Israel as believers in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah? No, that would be foolish, you guys. You're playing the devil's hand right there if you did. You're playing into his hand. So then Jesus said, then he will say to those on his left. (laughs) I know what you're thinking. Okay, it doesn't mean left as in liberal, but it's kind of funny that those words are there. I think it's funny, right? (laughs) Then he will say to those on his left. Depart from me, you cursed into eternal fire fire prepared for for the devil and his angels. Now, that part is not funny. That is serious business, you guys. This is how serious God takes this. I would be very, very, very careful about being against Israel. And I know a lot of Christians say, well, God's not into nation or nationalism or state. Be careful with that. He's into one nation, his people, okay? You could say nation if you want, but it's people Israel. 
He is into them. He's into his church, his Gentile bride, just like Joseph had a Gentile bride, Moses did. But he's also into his brethren, Israel. So was Joseph. So was Moses. So was God. <laughs> it's pretty plain, you guys. So be careful with that. Because here he says, right here, he says, For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. Remember the Nazis? Many of them claimed to be Christians. The BDS movement, boycott, divest, and sanction against Israel. That's garbage, you guys. Boycott means snub or spurn, snub, cold shoulder. That's what the Nazis did. You don't want to do that. The opposite of that would mean deal, welcome, and exchange. So should we be divesting in Israel for the Palestinians, for Hamas, and all these other crazy terrorist organizations? No. Divest means to deprive, bereave, and bankrupt. The opposite of that, the antimony of divest, is to clothe. Remember, we just talked about that. Jesus said, you clothe me, cover, give, and invest. My friend, you should invest in Israel. I'm investing in Israel. I've been giving to the Fellowship of Christians and Jews now for a long time, I think for over 20 years now, and it's been a blessing to me and my family to do that. But there's many other organizations. There's Jews for Jesus. There's um, One for Israel. Great ministry there. And yeah, the Fellowship of Christians and Jews, they give like 90% of what they bring in to help the Jewish people, to bring families in from countries that are very anti-Semitic, to bring them back to Israel, uh, to have a new life. It's an amazing ministry, and that's what you should be doing as a Christian, not the BDS stuff, okay? That that stuff is garbage. So again, here it is, guys. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was naked, and you clothed me. My brothers, he said. My brethren. The king said this. What king? The king of the Jews. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, uh, saying, Lord, when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And the king will answer them, truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. So sanction means to threaten and, and deny and disapprove. The antonym of sanction means reward and approve and endorse should endorse Israel. So which of these are you? Which one of them are you? If I were you, I would be the one who clothed his brethren, who gave, who invested in his brethren, who helped his brethren. That's who I would be. And some of you are going to disagree with me on this. I don't care. Some of you might persecute me for this. I don't care. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. <laughs> That's where my heart is, you guys. So I'm investing in Israel. In fact, I'm going to invest even more in them. And it'll be a blessing to me either way. If I die and go to heaven, it'll be a blessing. You know, it might even be a blessing here on earth. But either way, I'm going to do, I'm going to help Jesus' brethren. Okay, not only the church, but also his brethren, the Jewish people. So, hey, if you haven't hit this playlist yet, you might want to check it out. How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. This playlist will bless you greatly. So click on this right here, my friend.